Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I've been working on converting a tractor from gas to electric. And of course, uh, one of the major steps in that is taking out the engine and then replacing it with an electric motor. But which electric motor? Um, originally, I was really kind of hoping that I'd be able to use a Nissan Leaf motor in this electric, in the electric tractor project. It'd be uh, kind of a really cool mix of new and old. Uh, unfortunately, there's a number of reasons why I don't think that leaf motor is the best choice for this. Among them is it runs at a high voltage, so I've got to have a high voltage battery pack. More cost, harder to find the battery charger, DC to DC converter, things like that. Um, also, it can run at a really high speed, like 10,000 RPM, but a tractor really only needs low RPMs, about 2,000. So I also had just a monstrous forklift motor. And I mean, this thing would be just a total torque beast, just a tremendous amount of torque at low RPM, which sounds pretty perfect for a tractor, except that physically, this thing was a 13 inch diameter and to cram it in the tractor, just not gonna be quite enough room with where I need the supports and some of the other things that go into the tractor. So this electric motor behind me, you may recognize it. It's literally the same motor that I used in my electric Geo Metro, which I built going on 15 years ago. Uh, great thing about electric motors, really durable, uh, very long lived. So when I decommissioned that car, mostly because the body was rusting off, I pulled out the electric vehicle components because those were still perfectly good. And I did end up using this motor uh, a couple years back in kind of a goofy little project where I was actually uh, took an old lawn tractor and put it in something called the junk parade, uh, including doing wheelies pretty much the entire parade route. So this spring now, what I did is I pulled that electric motor back out of that tractor. Uh, it was really shoehorned in there as it was literally as long as the seat was wide. I actually had to put the drive shaft on the outside of the tractor and then chain drive it over to a jack shaft and then down to the transmission to get the whole thing to work. So it was a little bit of work getting it out of there. And this is no lightweight motor either. Of course, I couldn't use my engine hoist out there over on the grass and the tractor wouldn't drive under its own power. So I just had to do this right in the backyard. Uh, but once I got the motor out of there, into the wheelbarrow, got it back over to my garage in the working area, could start working on it, uh, including putting it on a scale right away, uh, just so we knew what that was. So here it is on the scale. Approximately 165 pounds. So this is a nice, big, beefy motor. And one of the things that I still have around is the original adapter plate that I used to connect the electric motor to the transmission of the Geo Metro. So I'm hoping that I can essentially just overlap this with the plate that was already on the bell housing, drill some new holes, and pretty easily have a new plate that will uh, connect and center the electric motor to the transmission. One disadvantage of this electric motor is it has a relatively short drive shaft and it's splined. And unfortunately, it's not like a, a super common spline. I haven't been able to find any uh, parts just uh, kind of off the shelf or mail order that'll slide right onto there. Now, fortunately, I do still have a piece uh, that I originally used back in the Geo Metro. And this uh, originally came off of a drum brake that was on the back end of the motor that acted as the parking brake for the forklift it was originally in. So this part here does happen to match up with the splines on the electric motor. So what I may be able to do is just uh, remachine this, connect it to something else to make that power connection between the electric motor and the transmission of the tractor. And that may also be a good spot where I can add an extra bearing in there. Because if we've got a clutch and a flywheel and all the way to the flywheel, I don't think the end bearing on this electric motor is gonna like that very much. Now, in this particular case, we do need to keep the clutch and flywheel. Although the tractor has independent power takeoff, that's powered by sort of a rotating collar that's in with the driven shaft in the transmission. And that's always connected to the flywheel. So for example, if we wanted to uh, have control over both the wheels and the power takeoff at the same time, we couldn't just spin down the motor to slow down the wheels. That would slow down the PTO as well. So what we actually need to do is be able to decouple the electric motor from the PTO, and that would be by using the clutch. So since I've got this motor on the engine hoist, I'm able to put it into the tractor and essentially get some rough spacing on it. I'm just gonna put it down 
about where I'm visualizing that it's gonna go. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm really just looking for the spacing. You know, is there anything else that's obviously gonna hit on here? And no, overall, it looks pretty darn good. It actually clears uh, that yoke that's at the bottom of the tractor. That was pretty important. Looks like there's also plenty of room around the motor for the bolts that are gonna hold it in place and the bolts that will hold an adapter plate to the transmission bell housing. I did already check out the commutator, the brushes, uh, the other parts of the motor. Although it does have a little bit of surface rust on it, overall, other than that, it's in really good condition. And what I'll do is before the final assembly of this project, I'll clean off that paint. I'll give it some nice red paint to match the tractor. So at this point, I guess my only concern is just that I'm able to mount the electric motor in such a way so that the flywheel is properly supported. That's probably gonna mean adding a bearing in here, and that might mean pushing the electric motor back from the tractor a little bit. I still wanna make sure I have enough uh, space in there to be able to squeeze in an electric hydraulic pump, because since we're not going to have an engine driving an engine-powered pump, we have to replace that. And we're basically just gonna do that with forklift parts. I do have a hydraulic pump motor that I wanna squeeze in here, and it'll fit just fine as long as I don't have to move the drive motor back too far. So that's it for today. Next time we'll talk about that hydraulic pump, including testing it. And until next time, stay charged up.